I'm Steve here again with Dr. Nario. Thanks for being with us, doctor. Hi, Steve. Thank you for having me again. Always a pleasure. All right. So you guys know, and we're going to talk about um, fructose and there's some different types. Um, we're going to talk about the, the fructose that's in um, fruit um, and some other different types um, processed fructose or sugar. Um, so that's what we're going to talk about. Um, if you guys want to know more about Dr. Nario, you can go online and uh, just Google or search Biointegrative Health Center there in Reno, Nevada, and you can see what they do there, the things that they treat. Um, it's uh, integrative is the type of physicians that they are there. So, um, Dr. <laughs> Is there, is there good and bad fructose? Uh, well, Steve, again, let's define first what fructose is. Um, it's a hexo sugar found especially, for example, in honey and, and fruit. So when I mentioned those, those are what we call natural fructose or sugars, right? Um, but fructose and, and sugar and, um, again, processed sugar and high fructose corn syrup, or what we call processed or industrialized sugar, has been considered like alcohol without the buzz in terms of the potential to inflict, for example, liver damage. Only industrial, again, not fruit fructose uh, intake was associated with declining liver function. And that's how harmful these things can be. And same thing with the blood pressure. It can, it's more of the industrialized uh, ones that can actually aggravate your blood pressure. Uh, fructose from added sugars was associated with also hypertension, and but to make it a bigger emphasis for everyone, fructose from natural fruits is not. These deleterious effects of fructose were limited only to what the processed ones, meaning table sugar and high fructose corn syrup, and with no evidence for a negative effect for the fruit, right? So these are according to studies and the apparent inconsistency might be explained by the positive effects of the nutrients in fruits such as fiber and antioxidants. And, and I will discuss that a little bit more in, 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 a, in another question. So um, I think everyone's aware that high fructose corn syrup is a bad thing, right? Right. Um, and, and so, and also processed sucrose, that's like table sugar, right? Uh, not the best. Um, so what happens when people consume uh, the processed um, sugars like high fructose corn syrup or something that's processed? What happens um, when, when we eat that? Well, Steve, I, I'll, let me give you an example uh, to be specific. If you have people drink a glass of water with three teaspoons of table sugar in it, it's almost like drinking a can of soda, right? And there is a, what happens there, there's a big spike in blood sugar that happens within the first hour after that intake. Our body freaks out and releases so much insulin that we actually overshoot, like super high, not the normal. We always release insulin, but this one overshoots it so far. And by the second hour, we, we rarely have hypoglycemia for the reason that it's so high of a boost, it lowers down blood sugar so much it's almost like you're fasting. So the secret here is that's where we, that's our knowledge is kind of limited at. But the secret here, which also I didn't know until I did a few more research about this, would be our body dumps fat into our bloodstream as we're starving, as all of these things are happening because of our blood sugars just drop so suddenly. And as you can see now, we're not just talking about diabetes, risk for diabetes, but also high cholesterol because the, that's how the body responds as a protection to increase the cholesterol, to, to, to dampen the, the insult in our system. Right. So when we eat these processed sugars, that drives the triglycerides up. That's what you just said, right? Yes, that's right. possible. Yeah. So when, when we eat processed sugars, that's going to drive the triglycerides up, which is going to probably affect our cholesterol. Right. Okay. So... Um, what can we do about this? How, how can we protect um, our blood panel, so to speak, or our insulin and, 
just the, the health of our bodies from these processed sugars. I mean, other than don't eat them. I mean, I guess that's simple, right? Right. <laughs> well, is how to protect ourselves? Is it by adding more sugars? What? That's also the suggestion by adding more. Let me explain a little bit more about that. But it's actually a yes. By adding natural ones, meaning fruit, let's let's give an example like berries. Uh, let's use it as our, our, our fiber example. They have sugars in their own in them. In fact, additional maybe teaspoon of sugar when you take it in. And so the blood sugar would 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 be worse, right? That's what you're going to think. You're going to add more when you eat these these uh, industrialized sugars with fruit sugar, but not really. Now, the the blood sugar uh, is the only thing that we're going to be seeing. It, it is going to spike, but is not. It's not going to be pathological of a spike. It's a natural spike that the body does when we introduce fruit sugars. And here's the critical part. There's no hypoglycemic dip when you take fruit sugar. Like as I mentioned to you a while ago about the process ones and blood sugar just went up and down without the overshoot. So it's just a natural reaction to the body and without the surge of fat in the blood. So that's why, as you can see, fruit is actually healthy. This difference may be attributed to the semi-solid consistency of berries or fruits and meals, which may have slowed the gastric emptying and compared with just drinking sugar water, for example. If we eat a bowl of cornflakes or white bread with no berries, for using it as an example, within two hours, so many free radicals are created. And it's actually now what we call an oxidative uh, depth for our bodies is so much. And in addition, the soluble fiber in the berries has a gelling effect in our intestines and that allows the release of sugars. So it's actually slowing down the release of these sugars. And um, actually it is um, yeah, proven that even natural fruit juice, okay, fruit juice, we just mentioned about fruit juice a while ago, um, the blood sugar does spike significantly, but it's also not gonna be that pathological spike or that bad spike for everyone for the reason that uh, it has phytonutrients in foods like um, it, it can also be seen in apples, strawberries. Uh, and again, this blocks the uptake of sugar in our bodies in, in a bad way. So the antioxidant power of our, uh, in our bloodstream drops below when we started from uh, like the breakfast uh, options that I just mentioned below uh, a while ago. And as the antioxidants gets all used up, um, this is something that is a basic concept of what's happening when we're eating sugars. So that's why two reasons why it's going to be protective. It has fiber and it also has phytonutrients. Lesson there, even fruit juice, pure fruit juice, not fake ones, actually is protective. And just a little tidbit for our um, viewers here, how much blueberries can we rely on to get this result? It's not actually a quarter cup. It should be almost half a cup in accordance to eating these other processed sugars to save our bodies. I eat um, almost every day a cup of organic blueberries. Mm -hmm. And I get, I, the, the way I get it is I put them in my protein shake. Right. Um, and it's a cup of organic blueberries. Um, organic is important to me. Um, and now there is, in, in that cup of blueberries I'm eating, there is sucrose and fructose in that, but it's all natural, right? That is correct. And that's why when I mentioned about the safety of fruit, which I will be discussing in a bit, more evidence as how, it, how it's safe, is that the sucrose and fructose that we compare it to most of the time will be the ones that we eat from junk food. And that's, when it, that's why it, the name fructose and sucrose gets a bad rap because that's where they're affiliated with. But you have to remember, even vegetables, even fruits contains these healthier versions of such. That's why we should not run away from them and actually eat more of them. Yeah, because there's processed sucrose and there's, pro and there's natural sucrose, right? Right, that is correct. Okay, so let's talk about people with diabetes uh, real quick. Um, should people with diabetes... Um, avoid fruit or the, you know, we're talking about fructose here, which is in fruit. Should diabetics avoid that? 
Right. So the, they are, Steve, the biggest or best examples on how fruits or um, should affect blood sugar. Should they, we go for it? Should we not? Because it's a disease related to blood sugar levels, right? So most guidelines, guidelines recommend eating a diet with a high intake of fiber rich food, including fruits, because they're so healthy with antioxidants, anti inflammatory effects, improves artery uh, functions, and even lowers cancer risks. However, some health professionals have concerns about the sugar content of, of food or fruit, especially for diabetics. Thus, sometimes they would recommend diabetics restrict the fruit intake in actually in a study. It's a diabetic. These are diabetic subjects in a randomized control um, trial. No effect on the control of the diabetes or even the weight um, of, of these subjects were seen when they were taking fruit with their diet. And so the intake of fruit should not be restricted in patients with type 2 diabetes. And emerging literature has shown that low dose fructose may actually benefit blood sugar control. And we're talking about healthy sources here, not the bad ones like your lollipop, right? So having a piece of fruit with each meal would be expected to lower um, the, 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 the blood sugar instead of raising it up or the overshooting so that the response will still be controlled. Thus, in short, diabetics should still be taking fruit regardless. You said something interesting there, doctor. You said um, low dose of fructose. What's a low dose of fructose? Right. So that's a, that's a good, that's a good uh, question. So how maybe we, it can also be uh, rephrased as how much fruit fructose should we have? Right. So to answer that question, um, really the benefits of fructose cannot be he healthy. Fructose cannot be denied because it actually has been even seen in weight loss patients. People lose more weight when, with the extra fruit present in, in, in what they eat in their diet. Um, and again, this is something that I really want to emphasize, but in relation to the threshold for toxicity of fructose, it's around 50 grams per day. So you, if you go over, that's no good anymore. The problem is that the, the current average adult fructose consumption um, is actually more than that. So the, it actually is going over to 75 grams daily. And you have to remember, these are not fruit based. You have to, you have to think about the uh, Western diet, right? This is what we call the processed um, high fructose corn syrup, table sugar, junk food sources that the Americans put in their bodies. So quoting the Harvard letter, really, the, the nutritional problems of fructose and sugar, uh, when, when they are added to food, which is actually what we do when we sweeten the cereals, for example, uh, is, be, is actually going to be the, um, the detriment of everyone. And fruit, on the other, other hand, is beneficial in almost any amount. That's from Harvard. You have to remember that. And what do you mean? What how, Can we eat 10 fruits a day? How, how about 20? Um, it's actually been even tested. That study had shown that uh, eating 20 servings a, a, a day of fruit despite the, extra, uh, the extraordinary high fructose content of the diet, presumably around, let's say 200 grams a day, almost eight cans of soda worth, right? Uh, the investigators reported that there were no adverse effects uh, and possible benefit actually that was seen, um, especially for the body weight, blood pressure, insulin, and cholesterol levels uh, after three to six months of doing this. And an astounding almost 38 point drop in the bad cholesterol when they did, when the study was done. And there was no one, there was only one side effect that was actually noted in this study because of all that fruit that they consume, they have actually recorded the largest bowel movements ever seen in a study. Thus, of course, talk about clogging the pipes, right? But as you can see, good side effects, not bad. So tell me your opinion because this is probably not in the study that you're referring to, and I don't, I don't know what the study is, but what about healthy starches? Mm -hmm. uh, what about that? Right. So that I agree with also. So that's um, when you're m mentioning that, I'm, the first thing that comes into my head, sweet potatoes, yams, um, uh, healthy bread, like seeded bread and grains, right? So these are things that I do agree because I, you have to always remember going back to the basics here, it's all about the fiber. 
the fiber that is not present in your Doritos, in your, in your hamburger or in your soda pop, and also the polyphenols, the color that is present in your fruit and your vegetables. These are not in these processed food. So that's why, yes, I do agree with them. They should not be limited to, to any pathology at all, especially diabetics. They, they're the perfect example when we talk about sugar levels. Yeah, I was just curious what your opinion was on that because a sweet potato is going to have fructose and sucrose mm -hmm. and all those right. different things in it too, right? Right. That is correct. That is correct. Well, very fascinating. Uh, I know that there is a ton of different opinions on this and everyone's different and <laughs> you got to just kind of uh, get this dialed in for you, you know, if I mean, we can all eat too much of something, even if it's, you know, you probably eat too much broccoli, you know, <laughs> you know, a, a truckload of broccoli is probably too much, but, um, so everyone's different, but, um, that is very fascinating take. And thank you for bringing that research to us, Dr. Nario. Thanks for being with us. Well, Steve, thank you for having me again. As we all know that our knowledge is your power to better help. And thank you for letting me provide you with the edge and longevity and health maintenance, which I call the biological edge or the bio edge.